We're just three days away. Donald Trump's hush money trial, as it's often called, gets underway on April 15th. It will share a page in the history books alongside something that happened 112 years ago on the very same day. Is there anyone there? Yes, what you see? Iceberg, right ahead! I can't believe that's the same day. But the Titanic, it was considered unsinkable, the biggest, the best, the most luxurious. Sound familiar? It was not just unsinkable, it was unthinkable until the moment the Titanic ran up against that iceberg and sank on, you guessed it, April 15th. But instead of icebergs, Donald Trump has been navigating, well, indictments. And now he's coming up against one that could threaten to sink his presidential campaign, his criminal trial in New York. And remember, he's got to get off the campaign trail and sit in that courtroom. And with three days to go, it looks like, well, it's full speed ahead. Judge Juan Merchant tonight throwing out Team Trump's latest attempt to delay the trial of what they now claim is excessive pretrial publicity, which, by the way, may be the first and only time that Donald Trump has ever objected to publicity. Let's remember what this is all about. An alleged scheme in 2016 to pay off adult film star and director Stormy Daniels to stop her from speaking publicly about what she says when it's an affair with Donald Trump years before. You'll hear it called a hush money trial, but the charges are really about, as a state, falsifying business records to cover up the payments, which are felonies. Trump has pleaded not guilty. He has completely denied the affair ever took place. And tonight he announced that he would testify in that trial, though, I mean, it remains to be seen whether he actually would take the stand eventually. Meanwhile, he is making it very clear that he is focused on the jurors who have his fate in their hands. You know, jury selection is largely luck. It depends who you get. There are a lot of questions about this trial. And tonight, you know, we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to answer them live, not just from our different discussions and people we've just seen, but your questions. So if you want to participate, just go to CNN.com slash Trump trial questions. You fill out the form, you type in your question there, and then we'll reach out to have you call in as the trial unfolds. Let's go to our first caller of the night. We've got James from Dublin, Ohio. James, what is your question? Uh, thank you for the opportunity, Laura. Uh, my question is, will Trump be present during voir dire? That's a good question, and I'll take the first stab at it. So in a criminal case, James, the person who is the defendant must be present in the state of New York. And so this is a part of the trial, the voir dire process. He has to get off of the campaign trail and be present for the duration of it. Now, how long it takes will be anyone's guess. But in a high profile trial in particular, it can be lengthy to try to get that final 12 plus alternates to sit and have that unbiased view from both the prosecution and the defense side. So it'll be very telling how long he is there. Ultimately, let's go to our next question here. We've got Chris from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Chris, What's your question? Good evening, Laura. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I am wondering if Trump is convicted, what is his most likely sentence? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm going to have um, Marcus. Why don't you focus on that one as well? What is your reaction? Uh, if, I, if I heard the question right, look, his most likely, it was a punishment, I believe is what it said, or sentence. Look, I'm, I think it would be like home probation or something of that nature. Like, I usually look at the charge here. There's no victim per se. It's not a violent crime. The former president doesn't have a history of, of criminal convictions here. So I think it's more realistic if you look at how courts wouldn't typically rule in these type of white collar cases where you're looking at maybe home confinement or probation of some period of time. Plus, you got to consider he's a former president. So there might be some logistical, actually not might, there will be some logistical concerns with, with, yeah. with putting him in, in jail per se. So... That's what I would, I would think would be the likely uh, sentence. I agree. I mean, and also remember the maximum penalty for each of the charges, I think it's like four years, but New York caps everything to 20 years. And so if he were convicted on all the counts, facing more than a decade. But as Marcus talks about, the judge has to consider a number of factors, including, including their criminal history and, of course, the practicality of what you would do in the equal treatment of the law 
to have somebody convicted of a crime not serve time if others in that position would, and being the president of the United States. There's a lot of ifs there, and he's got the presumption of innocence so far. Alyssa from Matawan, Michigan, what's your question? Hi, thank you, Laura. Can Trump's attorneys delay the trial by claiming all candidate jurors are biased during jury selection? Hey, that's a great question, Alyssa. And certainly he has had a field day in all the different motions that he has filed trying to delay it. But, you know, today is Friday. At the end of Friday, this jury selection will start on Monday. That's not opening statements, remember. That's the jury selection. So he could still have some bites at the apple potentially to try to suggest he wants to delay. Renato, what do you think? Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to delay the trial uh, via attacking a particular bias uh, amongst a juror. He could potentially challenge a juror for cause uh, when they're answering questions during voir dire. But if the judge disagrees, he'll have to use one of his 10 preemptory challenges, one of his 10 strikes to get a juror off. And I don't really see uh, any way in which he'll be able to use that as a, a method of delay. And remember, for cause, right, Renato, is something that is a legitimate reason to, so, to show definitively that the person could not follow the law. But the peremptory could be for any reason they want on both sides, right? It could be they don't like the way you looked at them. They don't like your T-shirt that day. That could be something they could use as long as it's not for an illegitimate purpose like race or gender or otherwise, right? Absolutely. Exactly. Well, we'll see how that turns out. We've got more questions. Catherine, um, Catherine, what is your question? Where are you calling from? Uh, Redwood Valley, California. Oh, wonderful. What's your question, Catherine? Hey, it uh, seems that Trump is allowed to appeal each and every decision. Is this normal procedure for any defendant? You know, we are seeing in real time what a lot of people don't always experience, and that is that a defense counsel will zealously try to defend their client based on the motions and trying to do everything they can to avoid a trial or to get the case dismissed outright. And so you are seeing a lot of this come to fruition. The, the number of similar, though, and redundant motions, Marcus, I think is really telling here. What's your take? Yeah, I, I think, look, it's the former president that's filing these motions. And so there is a lot of attention um, and, and probably um, uh, patience given by the court for each of these motions, where in, in real practice with other defendants, they might just be ruled on the, mo on, on the papers or a judge might just reject the motion from the bench and just say simply like not, a motion denied. I think because it is former President Trump and this is such a high stakes uh, trial, you're seeing a lot of, of due care given to each motion, even though it is ultimately denied. I think that's a great point. And now let's go to Tom from Raleigh, North Carolina, the research triangle of the United States. They say, what's your question? Oh, thank you. Um, are prosecutors able to question Stormy Daniels about personal, physical aspects of their alleged affair, such as physical features, unique identifiers, to dispute Trump's claim that he didn't have sexual relations with her? It seems to me that the more ironclad proof of the affair it is, the more it demonstrates premeditation and intent in falsifying records and covering up. That's a great point. You know, Stormy was on The View recently. Listen to what she had to say, by the way, about being ready to testify to these different aspects of it. I'm absolutely ready. I've been ready. I'm hoping with all of my heart that they call me because, as I showed on the stand against Michael Avenatti, no one, I don't need someone to speak for me. Mm -hmm. And I would, I relish the day that I get to face him and, and speak my truth. Well, I'll be curious to see how much the judge allows of these questions. Remember, every question has to be weighed, which is called the probative versus prejudicial value. And probative really meaning, does it go to the heart of the matter, the crimes, the allegations that are actually before this jury? While we all would like to hear the salacious, well, maybe we all would not like to hear the salacious details, it's up to you. The idea that the judge will have to really toe the line to suggest and confirm that this is actually about the case. And there also could be arguments made that the prosecution would have enough evidence to support their claims, even separate and apart of the actual allegations of an affair were true or not. Seems to me the closer you have to focus on if you are the defense or prosecution on proving an affair, the further away you are from the falsification of business records, although it does have what they call probative value with respect to what the motivation for paying her would be. But if the allegations alone would be enough to suggest a payment would be necessary, 
perhaps that's enough for the judge to let it all in. Renato, Marcus, thank you for helping to answer these viewer questions. And thank you to everyone who called in. Really, really thought-provoking questions. I love that you've done so. If you have a question you'd like us to answer on the upcoming Trump trial, listen, we'd love to hear from you. So just submit your questions at CNN.com slash Trump trial questions. That was really fun to talk to all of you from across the country.